Hello everyone and welcome back to Throttle Grotto. Uh, today I'm back out in the garage, still moving a little gingerly after my accident, but today we're working on the cooling system in the Rabbit. I've got it completely figured out and I'm going to show you what I did. Stay tuned. <music> For those of you that don't know, real quick, I fell down some steps, I got hurt, cracked a rib, I've been working as I can, but my pace slowed down quite a bit. So uh, that gave me time to do research on stuff I needed to get for the cooling system and get the cooling system wrapped up in the car, which is one of the, I thought would be a really difficult part of the job. Turns out it was super easy once I started getting in here and doing some measurements and figuring out exactly what I needed. So let me scoop up all the stuff that I have to put in here and I will show you what I did and where I put it. So the cooling system is now completely hooked up. So uh, for those of you that don't know how the cooling system works in here, I had to get some education on this too. This is your water pump distribution housing. Uh, this is where all of the junctions for the cooling system make their connections. So uh, initially when I looked at this, I thought that these two hoses were a, uh, like a one was not needed uh, because there was four connections to the cooling system. And that quickly changed to these. These two right here are the uh, upper and lower radiator hoses, which are hooked to this aluminum radiator which tucks in nicely into the core support here. It's a, basically a Scirocco uh, aluminum radiator that I flipped upside down to get the uh, supports on this side. Uh, down here I have a piece of U-channel that I'm going to line with rubber and install with some riv nuts to the core support uh, to hold it there. And then I can use the tabs that used to go used to drop into some holes I can use those as don't want to lose one of those uh, use those to make brackets to hold it to the upper radiator support here um, there is still a connection or a fitting over there that I can take out for a, a temperature fitting to go in the radiator so that I can build a harness for the radiator fan uh, and then down here I, so these are, this is a stock hose, this is a stock hose, this is a fitting from Amazon, it's basically a uh, temperature sender tap that I stuck a quarter inch NPT threaded with a five, five eighths barb on it to connect to the rest of the stock hoses. And then down here I've got a 90 degree aluminum fitting that goes to a piece of hose to the radiator. So I've just got to add hose clamps there. Back here, I removed a couple of the hoses that were connected to this outlet right here and shortened them up and connected to the heater core. And kind of the same thing with the one on the back side here, except I used... Okay, so I had forgot to install now it should be sort of easy to see. It's basically a 90 back there. Uh, and this is a uh, Mark III radiator hose that I had laying, or, or heater core hose that I had laying around that I joined back here with the connector. And then, of course, here we have the stock heater valve for the Rabbit. I can control the flow to the heater core. Um, so everything else on this side, basically this is the engine cooling side. So the charge cooling side, um, I kind of did the same thing with the upper hose. I chopped up the factory hose a little bit and installed another one of those temperature senders with a, another tap and another piece of hose. Um, and then cut the factory hoses a little bit. I still need to clamp all these, obviously. Um, and then on the bottom, uh, basically it will be a another one of those 90 degree bends 
and a little piece of hose to connect the elbow to the basically what is the intercooler for the charge cooler or the secondary radiator and so this <clears throat> this radiator is from a Yamaha uh, TRX 450 UTV so same kind of idea I'm going to install it with the channel and then make some uh, brackets to hold it to the top of the top of the uh, core support and then here we'll just have water bottle mounts pretty standard um, and that's pretty much it that is the cooling system and that is basically every connection that needs to be made um, one thing I did do when I chopped up this hose here is I also added this guy this is a continental Bravo 87653, which basically allows me to do a U-bend off of there. And then I had to do a little uh, connector here to join that hose to the factory hose um, to adapt it to the right size for the sender. And then I just cut off a piece of extra hose that I had and joined it to the secondary radiator. All right, so not the most exciting video that I've done, um, but this was a huge piece of the project to get out of the way. Um, figuring out how the cooling system all needs to work as close to factory as possible uh, really is a big, big deal. So figuring out how the cooling system works as close to stock as possible was, was a pretty big deal. Uh, so... It, cost me, I don't even want to think about how much it cost me. I already had the radiator. This little charge cooler radiator was about $70 on eBay. Um, these little fitting, the fittings were, uh, the temperature sender fittings were about, I think they were like $15 or $20 a piece. Um, I already had a lot of the hoses. I had a stock of like extra hoses that I could draw from. Um, so all in all, it probably cost me 150 bucks to, to get all the pieces I needed to do the cooling system. So again, still quite a bit of work to do to finalize this, but, and I hope this helps you if you're thinking about doing a 1.4 T swap uh, in one of these cars. Um, again, just kind of trying to figure out what fits and what doesn't and where to put stuff. I got to use my brain a little bit while I've been injured, so. <laughs> So I got a few more puzzles to figure out. I still got to put fuel lines in this car. Uh, I still got to come up with an intake solution because this is just a, I think this is a little too proud. I think it's going to hit the, the center of the, uh, the hood. So probably reroute this somewhere. I think there's aftermarket kits you can get now that even reroute it on this side, which would be nice because I've got a big open area over there to work with. So. So, still plenty to do on the Rabbit, still tons to do on the Cyborg. I bought another car, you'll find out what that is later. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna go inside and rest my back because uh, I've kinda done all that I need to do, <laughs> all that I should do for tonight. So, uh, until next time, get out there and work on something.